Schwartz turned and walked back into the room. In a level and respectful tone, he said, I'm working at the request of the city of Pittsburgh. I have an investigator's license from the state of Pennsylvania, and the reputation of a potentially innocent man gives me even further moral authority. My methods may prove faulted, but I have my reasons for them, and I am under no compulsion to explain them to any of you. 2020 is still over half a decade in the future, but already the Olympic Games scheduled for that year are facing a scandal concerning poor sportsmanship. The mini-scandal centers on remarks a representative of one potential host city made concerning another. Tokyo's governor and head of the city's Olympic bid committee, Naoki Inoze, was quoted in the New York Times making mildly despairing remarks about rival would-be host Istanbul. The International Olympic Committee is investigating the comments due to rules against rival cities commenting on one another to curry favor. Inoze had said, among other things, Islamic countries the only thing they share in common is Allah, and they are fighting with each other, and they have classes. He had also said, for the athletes, where will be the best place to be? Well, compare the two countries where they have yet to build infrastructure, very sophisticated facilities. Governor Inoze has since apologized. In the mid-60s, when the Second Vatican Council ended, a lot of confessional booths in churches were closed or removed, replaced by reconciliation rooms, where the faithful could sit face to face with a priest and talk about their sins in the context of self-improvement. When the Archdiocese of Hartford, Connecticut, urged its parishes to extend the hours of confession, Yanis Kukulka, a priest at St. Mary the Immaculate Conception Catholic Church wanted to hear his parishioner's confessions in a confessional built for that purpose. Kukulka got his wish. Confessionals are sold on eBay. A parishioner donated the money for the confessional and two parishioners volunteered to drive to Iowa to pick it up and to install it. Kukulka parishioners were eager to line up to enter the private booth and partake in the sacrament of confession. One parishioner feels he got celebrity status for being first to enter the booth and confess. Although Thomas Groom, professor of theology and religious education at Boston College, doubts that an old school confessional will be enough to keep the momentum going, Anonymous confession is very popular in Connecticut. Monsignor Stephen D. Giovanni, who reopened the confessionals in St. John, the Evangelist Roman Catholic Church in Stamford in the late 1990s, hears 400 confessions a week. However, it is difficult for Kukulka parishioners at St. Mary the Immaculate Conception Church to maintain anonymity because voices inside the confessional echo through the sanctuary.